Now, if you love fall decor and you are looking for something for your front door or something to hang on the wall, then you are going to love this video. I'm Jamie, the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome back to my channel. All right, you guys, I am super excited about today's projects because they are all focused on fall and some of them are kind of transitional. So you could totally use some of them like right now to kind of ease into your fall decor if you really wanted to do that. Now, I'm obsessed with a couple of these. I cannot pick a favorite yet. So you'll have to let me know in the comments below which ones are your favorites. All right, guys, let's get started. And for project number one, we're going to take this pumpkin cutout that I picked up from Dollar Tree. Also, I have some of these beads that are on hand. I'm sure I picked these up at Michael's or Walmart. I always seem to have beads on hand. And I actually love the different colors of this particular box of beads. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take some twine and we are going to strand up these beads. Now, you're going to want to make sure that you've got enough for one side and then also the other side. And we're just going to be doing this around the center part of that pumpkin. So I just thought it would be easier to create a strand rather than gluing each bead down individually. So now what we're going to do is bring those two ends together and uh, tie them off. And you're going to want to make sure that this fits within that center cutout of your pumpkin. Pumpkin. Now, if you wanted to cover the entire pumpkin in beads, you certainly could. But I think when you see kind of what the final product is here, you'll totally understand why I did what I did. Now, before we glue any of our beads down, we are going to take some antiquing wax and we are going to just wax up or stain up this wood. And right now, I'm just kind of doing a lighter coat with my antiquing wax because as you know, with any antiquing wax, anytime you put down the wax on the wood, you can immediately wipe this off and you don't have to worry about it being excessive. Now, while that is drying, I am going to create a tassel and I'm just going to take once again my same twine that I used for the beads and I am going to just make a nice kind of chunky tassel. So to do this, all you have to do is wind up a bunch of twine. You can use your hands, depending on how big you can spread your fingers. You can use a piece of cardboard. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. And then you're simply just going to tie off a piece of it like I am doing here. And you're going to kind of create, um, I think it kind of looks like a little rag doll that um, my Aunt Bonnie used to make. And uh, now we're going to just tie this on to the ends here of our beaded strand. And then after you get that tied off, go ahead and cut off any of those strings that you're not going to need. And then for the bottom pieces of your twine there where you see them kind of ringed up still or where the um, ends you know, have not been cut, now you're just going to cut them and take a nice sharp pair of scissors, go ahead and even it up, and then you've got a tassel. Now, before we glue these down, I do want to give my pumpkin a little definition. So I am going to go in with some more antiquing wax, and I'm using a makeup sponge, by the way, to apply this. And all I am doing is, because this pumpkin is kind of a cutout, not not quite 3D, but I think you know what I mean. I'm taking those pieces that are in the center and the sides, and I am going to darken those up because I want those to really pop when I am making this project. And I'm just going through being very patient, just being very careful and putting some antiquing wax on those um, kind of three uh, sides of the pumpkin. I was going to say humps, but that just didn't sound right. So the, um, the parts of the pumpkin there, I'm getting them nice and dark. And then after this is done, I'm going to go ahead, take my heat gun, make sure that this is nice and dry. And then also I'm going to clean my hands because I don't want to transfer any of that antiquing wax that's on my hands over to my beads. So now that I've got my beads all ready and everything is dried, we are going to go through now and, um, just position where our beads are going to go. Right now, nothing is glued down because you want to make sure that that tassel is going to be centered. So I'm going to find my center point and then I am going to glue that part down. We're going to do this kind of in slow parts. So go ahead and add a little bit of glue, really just enough to make sure that your center point is nice and centered. 
Go ahead and squish those beads down inside of that glue. I'm using wood glue, by the way, from Shurebonder. And now you can take your other beads kind of up like you see me doing here, and you can add the rest of your hot glue. I did this fairly quickly and was able to just get everything stuck down. I did add a pretty generous amount of glue and um, everything will hold in place. So then you just kind of roll your beads right into their little canal there. And uh, then you've got this display, which looks like this. I think it's super, super cute, but I did want to add something else to it. So I'm taking a piece of my hula skirt that I've been chopping up pretty much all year and um, making a bow with the raffia pieces. That is probably one of the best hacks that I've learned. And that was from Megan over at Glue Guns and Roses. She actually told me to buy the hula skirts during the summertime and save them because they are so much easier to work with when making bows or anything with raffia because they're so long. The pieces are so much longer than the raffia bundles that you would find inside Dollar Tree or like in the Crafter Square section. So definitely, definitely go and do that. I love it. But when it's all done, this is what it looked like. I think it was super, super cute. And I'm very, very happy with this one. Now this next pumpkin is kind of going to be a spring inspired, I guess we can say. These pumpkin cutouts I love. I picked this up at Dollar Tree. Love the texture that this kind of looks like it has. And uh, I'm just going to embrace that texture because I really like it. Now these are from Deco Art. This is a package of transfers that you can buy. And um, I thought that these were great. I love the size of them. Loved that... Um, you know, they're going to be super, super easy to use. And we are going to kind of make a, you know, transitional pumpkin. A lot of you know, it's still really, really hot around the country where you live. And maybe you're wanting to get fall or wanting to sneak in some fall decor. And I think that this is a great, great way to do it. These rub-on transfers are such a great size. And I think that they're really cute. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut the pieces that I want off of here. We're going to use one of these oversized fern pieces. And all you have to do with any kind of rub-on transfers, just make sure that you don't take that backing off until you are ready to place it on. Go ahead and place it down and make sure that is where it is going to go because a lot of times this is already starting to stick to your surface. Now take a credit card, take a squeegee. If you've got a Cricut machine, take your Cricut paddle like I've got here and just slowly go back and forth and then peel away. And it looks like you had a Cricut and maybe you don't have a Cricut. Having these kind of oversized rub-on transfers are perfect. Now I've got this welcome sign. It seems a little flat though, and uh, I'm gonna play with it still. I was originally just going to do the welcome sign and the piece of fern, but I think it definitely needs a few more embellishments. So butterflies are always something that's very significant and very important in my family because butterflies do remind me of my grandmother. So, and she loved butterflies too. So every time I see a butterfly, of course, I always think about my grandmother. So we are going to add the butterfly. Um, I did not stick that welcome sign yet because I'm still not super happy with it. But we're going to go ahead and take our butterfly and once again, just do the rub on transfer and get her all set up and beautiful. And I love the color with the orange and it's kind of, you know, blending into some of the fall colors. Now with the welcome sign, this is about where I am going to place it. And then I want to add this little ladybug. That is also a rub on transfer from that set that I picked up from DecoArt. You can go to decoart.com and find these types of things on their website. Um, that's actually where I got it. And uh, just go ahead and rub on and rub on and get everything ready and you'll be able to have a super, super cute pumpkin. Now, for my welcome sign, again, I was like, I need some height. So I took my tool out here and I started cutting into these Jenga blocks. Now, this tool actually cuts really, really well, and it's not super hard to use. Um, this, this, I can't think of the name of this thing right now, but it, it, 
takes a little bit of force, but it cuts through those jingle blocks really, really easily. And I just cut down some small pieces that I could literally just glue on the back. I knew that regardless of where I cut them, as long as I used a certain side of them, they would be the same height. And I just cut them down so they would be small enough that they would be hidden kind of behind the letters there. So I'm taking them and I'm just kind of spacing them out. And then I'm going to glue them on top and you've got the cutest sign ever. I added another raffia bow and I love the way that this turned out. This next project, this is a total dupe and this is so easy, anybody could do it. I saw a very similar wreath at Kirkland's and it was like $45 and I was like, that is insane. I had this wreath from uh, Target, it was in the dollar spot section. And then I had the sunflower stickers that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. And then I had the sunflower ribbon that I found at the Dollar Tree. So I think altogether the wreath was $3. The stickers were probably three or $4 with a coupon. And then I had the ribbon that was $1.25. So I am literally just recreating this wreath that I saw or giving it my version of this wreath. Now I have enough sunflowers to go completely around and I am gonna add this bow into the middle here. And uh, the sunflowers do have stickers on the back but they're obviously not going to stay. So I am just going to add some hot glue onto the, um, what is that? Uh, the box wood wreath there that I've got. And and we're just gonna work our way around with these stickers, kind of spreading them out, making them as evenly possible. The great thing about this is because the um, sunflowers, they will stick directly onto that plastic wreath and it works out really, really cute. I think that this is, especially because I saved so much money doing this, I thought that this would be a super, super easy project for really anybody that's just getting started in crafting or anybody that just wants to do a simple, fun project. I love sunflowers in the fall and really like the way that this is turning out. Now for my bow, I'm just gonna take some twine and tie it off in the middle. And then I did create some kind of uh, ribbon pieces. I added the sunflower to the center and it is done. For my next DIY, we are going to be using these little mini baskets that we picked up last season. I've also got this wood box that I picked up from Dollar Tree Plus. I have these laser word wood cutouts, these wood apples, and these hay bales. Now we are going to take all of the hardware off of this box because we're actually not going to use it. We're not going to use the lid either, but definitely save that lid. For these wood laser wood cutouts, we are going to search through these. You've got a lot of cute options. Hello Autumn, Give Thanks, Hello Fall, there's Blessed, and this one in particular, Farm Fresh, I really, really loved. So I took my antiquing wax out, kind of gave it an aged look so we would have an aged sign for our little apple orchard. I took all my apples, I spray painted them outside, and then for the hay bales, we are just going to start to arrange those hay bales. Now, I'm just trying to figure out kind of what I want to do right now. I haven't glued anything down as of yet. And then once I do kind of have that vision, I will start to glue these down and um, these hold with hot glue really, really well. They are great. I love working with these little things and uh, I have not been able to find them this year. These were actually left over from last year. So go ahead and arrange your hay bales however you want. And then for our sign for our apple orchard, we are going to take that and we're going to glue it in the back of the box like so. And now it is time to start picking some apples. So we are going to grab one of our baskets and we are going to fill that up with some apples. Now I did not glue these down. You could certainly glue them down if you wanted to, but for this particular one, we are just going to put this basket of apples on top of our hay bale right here. You can do that just by adding a chunk of hot glue and then um, take your basket and just glue it right down. And then for the other basket, I am going to add some glue in the bottom of this one because these baskets are tipped over and there's some apples spilling out all over the orchard here. And uh, I'm just gonna place this basket on the side like you see here. Then we're gonna spread some apples around and you've got the cutest little apple orchard. Now, I did end up kind of emphasizing the side there with some an antiquing wax and I love the way this turned out. I think it is so, so cute and super, super adorable. 
Next DIY is super, super easy. We are going to take this bowl and this plate. We are going to create a little tiered tray with this. Now you could use this for a serving piece. You could use this for a candle. There's a lot of different options. And I kind of hinted during my last shopping haul that I was going to do something like this. Just simply add some super glue and then mix in a little hot glue. That way you get an immediate bond. Join those together and boom, you've got a very cute tiered tray that you can use for staging or a candle. I love it. Who does not love a pickup truck during the fall filled with pumpkins? I found these place mats and I've had these since last year. I also found these dish mats for fall this year and thought they could be really, really cute to combine together to create a pillow. Very, very easy. Take one of the Dollar Tree dish mats, just simply remove any of the tags that are on there and add some hot glue. Now this is fabric glue from Shorebonder and uh, you can get this in a variety of different places. You can find it in the link in my store, in my Amazon store. Check this out. All you have to do is stuff your pillow, go ahead and glue on three sides, stuff your pillow with foam or pillow filler, whatever you have on hand. You can even use plastic Dollar Tree bags if you wanted to do this for outside. It creates the cutest little pillow or the cutest little piece of decor. I love it. Next project is a wreath that is all from Dollar Tree. I was able to get the wreath form in the Dollar Tree Plus section, this gorgeous garland from Dollar Tree Plus, and then all of these kind of accoutrements that I've picked up along my haul. So this wreath is kind of a raffia wreath, but I will show you one thing. Do not cut these straps that are going across the wreath form, because if you do, this raffia wreath is going to fall completely apart, and you do not want this. Now, go ahead and remove all that plastic, and then we are going to take our first strand of garland, and again, this is garland that was from Dollar Tree Plus. It was $5. The wreath form was $3, and I did grab two of the garland strands. Now, I am just going to take this, and I am awkwardly wrapping it around my camera kind of a holder is not quite high enough. So um, just wrap it. Don't even worry about where everything is falling, where the leaves are falling, where the pine cones are going. Just go ahead and wrap it. And I love doing this, by the way, for almost every single wreath that I do. I love using garland because garland already has everything in it that you need for the most part. And it's a super easy way to get a good base going. So now that you've got, you know, a couple of your garlands wrapped around your raffia form, now you can kind of start playing with it and fluffing it out and, you know, manipulating it and moving it around. We haven't stuck anything down. We haven't glued anything down because the garland does have wire in it. So it's holding to the wreath form. So this is kind of what it looks like after I have fluffed it out. And I think it's really, really cute just like this, but I do want to add a few more items to it. So I did have two packages of this garland from Dollar Tree. The $1.25 garland's quite different looking than the uh, $5 garland. I had these pieces here, but I ended up not using those floral pieces because they always kind of fall apart and then Mr. Otis ends up eating them and he doesn't need to eat styrofoam. And then I have these pumpkins, which at first I I have to tell you, I was not going to use, but uh, you'll see what I ended up doing at the end. So I also have some of these flowers. I've had these flowers for a while. I think that these are great. And I do love how they pick up on the colors. So I started kind of adding those in. Now on the back side of the wreath, I did cut away kind of any of those leaves that were just kind of in the way, not allowing it to be flat. And we are going to add those back into the wreath. So don't worry, there's no waste going on here. And then for the flowers, because they have those great wire stems and because this wreath form, again, is that kind of raffia, you can just stick these directly into the wreath form. It's actually really, really easy. There's nothing that I've done here that is glued down. And when it is all done, I am absolutely in love with this. I love the way it looks on my yellow front door. To me, this is harvest, this is fall, and I am obsessed. All right, you guys, let me know in the comments below which ones were your favorite. This is a hard one for me. Um, 
because I definitely have a couple favorites here. Also, I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers. Thank you guys so much for being here. I truly, truly appreciate it. All of my OGs out there, that just means the original gang that's been out there since the very beginning with me. Thank you again so, so much. And uh, all of my newbies, of course, you are welcome, and I thank you as well. If you've not subscribed to my channel yet, maybe you will stick around. We do all kinds of fun stuff here. I try to mix it up with some shopping hauls and some DIYs and some mystery unboxings and, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. So more to come. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye.